transformative video for you guys out there in TV land. If you saw our last series of videos on compensators, you would see that we were out on the range and we got to shoot this little bad boy, our Beretta 21A 22 long rifle with a suppressor. And today we're gonna clean said handgun. And a lot of folks have talked to me about suppressors. Some have seen them, some have handled them, some haven't. But a lot of people have never seen how a suppressor works or what the inside or the guts of a suppressor are really made of. So today we're gonna go through that and show you guys and you're gonna come along for the ride. Hopefully you'll dig it. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button and always check us out, www.theronintraining.com. Let's get started. We got our basic ingredients laid out here. Our Beretta 22, our Radical Firearms 22 caliber suppressor, our good old Yuck toothbrush, old school CLP, our magazine, of course, for our Beretta, and our Boar Snake for cleaning out said Beretta. Now, once again, as we always preach here at the Ronin Training, safety, safety, safety. So let's do a check on this weapon. There is no magazine inserted. This is a tilt barrel, so the barrel is tilted. There is no round inside the barrel, which is basically the chamber, but just to be sure, we're gonna pull back the slide. And this weapon is empty, and it is a safe weapon. Let's get started cleaning. As usual, we're gonna bust out the CLP. Good thing I got some nails on me to get that nozzle open there. And we're gonna drizzle our CLP. Now this is an extremely simple weapon, extremely simple. Brake barrel action, you load the magazine in, the magazine holds seven, magazine gets loaded, the barrel gets tilted open with this release right here that looks like it would be a slide release. So basically give it a simple push and the barrel tilts open. Your first round gets dropped into the barrel, closed, and you're ready to start firing. You don't have to actually retract the slide and chamber around to begin firing with this weapon system. Pretty simple, pretty cool design by Beretta, our, our uh, friends across the pond in Italy there. So we are gonna give it a good scrub down because being a rim fire chambered handgun, your 22 rim fires are really, really, really renowned for being gunky and dirty and funky. Pull our slide back here. Now I'm gonna use my hands as best I can, whoops, slippery with some oil, to hold our slide open so that I can really get inside there, give it a good scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Now with that open, I wanna put a single drop of oil in on the spring. Oh, let's put it in on the trigger spring too while we're at it. There we go, and that is basically that. That's how ridiculously simple this is. Inside is, you can't really see on camera, but our firing pin housing in there. We'll give that a little bit of a scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Now, being a suppressor, oh, you know what? We'll do the hammer as well, just to be sure, because this thing gets yucked. We'll scrub down on the outside that will wipe off with our oil rag, just to be thorough. There we go safety catch which is extremely difficult to operate good thing this thing has an extremely heavy trigger pull on it being that it was suppressor or suppressor ready we can unscrew the thread protector or barrel cap whichever you want to call it and it exposes our threads we definitely want to give those a nice scrub a dub dubbing our suppressor was on there we'll do our thread protector as well get in there nice and scrub delicious on all my other firearms, you've heard me talk about punching the bore, cleaning out our barrel. And I always preach and preach and preach about a bore snake. This one is, again, hops number nine, set up for 556, 223. But what a lot of folks don't realize is 223 is just a smidge above a 22, basically a high velocity 22. So our bore snake will, in fact, fit our little dainty 22 pistol over here. So I am gonna put a drop of oil into our barrel, like so. And then just like every other time we've played this game, I'm gonna drop our brass tip through the barrel, like so. 
drag it through and there goes our boar snake feed it in there nicely run that puppy through and again i talk about the brass teeth that are embedded into the snake to help pull out all the fouling all the copper residual copper pieces in there and all the uh carbon that builds up and that is a nice clean bore in there so we are basically done with this little banger i'm going to set it aside now we're going to get to the part you guys tuned in for our suppressor this is chambered for a 22 caliber it is made by radical firearms out of stafford texas and it is a direct thread meaning it gets threaded directly onto our barrel as opposed to a QD, a quick release or quick detach, which usually has a device in the back that allows it to fit over a muzzle device or muzzle brake and basically like a ratcheting system to ratchet down. This takes a little bit longer to put on there, uh, screws on probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 rotations to get it on there tight and you give it a good crank down. And uh, every couple of rounds, you always wanna check to make sure it's still, uh, still locked on there really good. So. Uh, this is our, our threaded end, which fits onto our barrel, and this is the business end. That's the end that makes the bad guy go away, or in this case, a chicken, maybe a uh, possum, a duck, a water chicken. I'm not advocating shooting animals, but we simply grab the crown of the muzzle on the end of this and unscrew it, like so. That pops out. Bit of a tilt. A lot of carbon buildup on this bad boy. My gosh. I'm gonna try this side. Let's pull her out that side. There we go. Oh wow! Look at that. You could. Can you hear that? Let me. Let me try to shut my gap here. Listen to that. That is a serious carbon buildup in that bad boy. So you've got your suppressor body, which is literally an aluminum tube. You've got your suppressor cap, and then you've got your baffles. So this is the guts, this is the interior, this is what makes a suppressor a suppressor. I'm gonna to try to get every angle on it here. So a suppressor is basically just a tube that houses the baffles, which are a series of chambers, if you will, that trap the gases, the hot gases, once the firing pin strikes the primer and ignites the gunpowder inside the cartridge, it propels the projectile forward through the barrel. Once it technically leaves the barrel, it will pass through the suppressor, and as the projectile is passing, here I'll use our yuck toothbrush, as the suppressor, uh, excuse me, as the projectile is passing through the suppressor, all the hot gases that are behind it, propelling it through the barrel up to high speed, start to hit each one of these baffle walls, each one of these chamber walls, and it's slowed down as, e as it passes through each one. As it's slowed down, it's allowed to slowly bleed off through the top of these access holes here and through the bottom. So it basically slows down those gases to where you're not going to hear such a loud, violent report. When you hear a gun go bang, there's two things you're hearing. The first thing you're hearing is the actual firing process of that bullet being initiated and going down the barrel of the gun. That is the bang that you're going to hear the little mini explosion that is happening inside the firearm the second is the breaking of the sound barrier the sonic boom the crack of that high velocity round moving through the air so a lot of times when you see suppressors on weapon systems like in the movies they're so deadly quiet that the assassin can walk up in a busy restaurant pick out his target zap them with a suppressor and everyone's eating their caviar and has no idea what went on. That is not the case. This will help muffle or as deaden as best it can the initial report of the firearm being activated. It does nothing to stop, slow down the sonic boom of the round going supersonic through the air. So that's a huge Hollywood myth that they're super silent, they're super deadly. One of the issues why a lot of our uninformed politicians up in DC are so scared of these things because they think if everyone had a suppressor, everyone would become a super secret assassin, just not the case. Now, with suppressors, there are two types of ammunition you can fire, and I'm gonna get to cleaning while we're chatting here. I'm gonna lube this sucker up good. There are two types of ammunition you can use. Of course, you can use your full house ammunition, which is the ammunition you would normally use 
your high velocity ammunition, your self-defense ammunition, the stuff that you would normally fire through your weapons platform. And a suppressor will suppress that ammunition to the best of its abilities. It depends on the suppressor length, the suppressor size, the number of baffles, what have you. Now they also make subsonic ammunition, which is just what it sounds like. Subsonic ammunition is the same ammunition caliber that you would use, but usually less powder, less propellant than your standard ammunition. Now that is for a very specific reason, because as I mentioned before, the two, two things when engaging a weapon system are the firing of the bullet that makes a sound and then the crack, the sonic boom of that round breaking the sound barrier. Subsonic ammunition does not travel at such high speed. It travels, it's designed and set up to travel below the speed of sound so that it doesn't create that loud crack, the boom that you hear when a round is being fired, breaking the sound barrier. Think of it like a, like a fighter jet. Anybody ever been to a, uh, an air and sea show or something like that? When the fighter jets go by, you hear that kaboom and it scares the heck out of everybody and everybody cheers and everyone's excited. That is the breaking of the sound barrier that we mentioned. So subsonic ammunition is not powdered to the powder charge to hit that level. It will not break the sound barrier. So it eliminates a lot, not all, a lot of that boom that you're going to hear. And with your suppressor doing what a suppressor is designed to do, makes the report, uh, excuse me, the, the firing sequence of the weapon system as low as possible. That is going to be your ideal, your ideal suppression for your firearm. Now, that being said, like everything else, it's a matter of give and take. Subsonic ammunition will most definitely aid in making your suppressor much, much quieter. But one of the biggest drawbacks is because it has less powder, it's loaded to a lower charge. Most of the time, almost all of the time, subsonic ammunition will not cycle the action of your semi-automatic firearm. Meaning, when you pull the trigger on your firearm and it goes bang, it initiates the bullet and your bullet leaves the barrel, your action by those gases that are built up in there will then cycle the action, loads the next round and yada yada, you know how it goes. Subsonic ammunition won't cycle that action. So what you basically have to do is manually cycle the slide to load and chamber the next round. Bit of a drawback, but not absolutely detrimental. Super, super, super quiet process, but it takes a little more manual labor, if you will. They do make boosters for larger caliber handguns, especially, that you can load onto your pistol that will help, it's almost like a bit of a spring that will help with subsonic ammunition. And most of the time they work pretty decently, but all in all, you're probably going to end up having to cycle the action of your handgun to chamber the next round and get it going the way you need it to get going. So it's got its trade-offs, super, super, super quiet, but much more labor intensive. And again, our lovely politicians up in DC think subsonic ammunition paired with a suppressor is gonna make you a lethal death-dealing assassin who can blast off hundreds of rounds of ammunition at all his, his foes as quietly as possible. Simply not the case. Again, misinformed people listening to Hollywood myths. So all in all, that is basically the gist of a suppressor. Uh, using suppressors, they get really, really, really dirty. That's a huge downside of it. They trap all the gas, all the carbon. These things get filthy. I know you saw my fingers as soon as I pulled these baffles out. 
They make your weapon really, really dirty. It takes a lot of extra cleaning. And especially when, the, now this being a 22, it's it's nothing, nothing that you can't really handle. It's basically a poodle shooter, as they call them. But when you get into your larger caliber platforms, your rifles, your uh, 5.56 five, guns, your 7.62s, 9mm and 45 caliber handguns, a lot of times those gases get slowed down. They need a place to go. A lot of the gas will go through the chambers, but a lot of the gas kind of gets stuck and tends to blow back, especially when firing uh, full powered ammunition. And a lot of times you can get a lot of that blow back into your face, on your face, which is why we always talk about eye protection. Uh, it does expose you to a whole lot more lead and gunpowder and all the other stuff out there that's not really the best for you when you're breathing that stuff in, especially on a indoor range. But again, suppressors are fantastic for your hearing. In fact, I know in Congress, they were trying to push through a sound suppressor act that would require people to use suppressors. Uh, certain countries in Europe, uh, Sweden, Norway, Finland, like that, if you are recreationally shooting, you have to use a sound suppressor because of, again, the hearing issues. So all in all, people ask, are suppressors worth it? Personally speaking, they take quite a long time to acquire. You can simply walk into a store that sells NFA items, National Firearms Act items. Say, I would like that suppressor for my firearm. That looks really cool. You can have said suppressor for your firearm. You fill out certain paperwork, National Firearms Act paperwork with the ATF, the Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms. And usually a, they call it a Form 1 is one of the best ways to do it. You can do it as an individual or you can set up a trust that it would go under, just like any other uh, property or item of value, you can set up a trust. And then along with your fingerprints and the photos of yourself, your paperwork will be sent off to the federal government, to the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Now the FBI traditionally used to perform the background checks. That is not the case anymore. Now the ATF has to fill out all their own background checks. So that adds to the time and you are looking at a wait time to receive your NFA item, your suppressor, back from the ATF it can sometimes be significant. Personally, I did a Form 1 as a trust, and my suppressors that I have, I own a few, they were averaging about 12 to 13 months. So that's basically what you're looking at. You are looking at basically a year from the day your paperwork is accepted by the ATF, not the day you turn it in, of waiting. And your FFL, your federal firearms dealer, will hold on to your NFA device, your suppressor, until your uh, approval paperwork comes back. And once your approval paperwork comes back, you pay a $200 fee for a tax stamp and that tax stamp goes along with your paperwork. As I'm talking here, we'll thread this puppy on, get a look at it. Once that tax stamp is comes back with your paperwork, you are officially filed, and you have yourself a sound suppressing device for your firearm. And there we have it. Our James Bond special, our 22, super quiet, very concealable, very lightweight, now, suppressors do, of course, make your firearms platform front heavy because they thread on or attach to the barrel, so it makes it a little front heavy. Uh, one of the other catches with a, especially a handgun and a suppressor is, I'll turn it this way, see if you guys can catch that, is the circumference of the suppressor to the entire platform of the firearm. You can see the sights. Now, this being a little 22, its uh, sight system isn't exactly the greatest. It's more of a, a pocket rocket, a last ditch pocket gun. But your standard issues, your Glocks, your SIGs, your HKs, your Smith & Wessons, what have you, you usually want to get a set of what they call suppressor sights. They are, you remove the original sights that come on your handgun, and you add suppressor height sights, which sit probably three quarters of an inch higher above the slide than your regular sights do. And what that does is it allows you to actually get a sight picture 
down your handgun as you would traditionally to fire it. The sights sit above the suppressor and allow you to see and retain that sight picture. And you just adjust accordingly uh, for your hold off uh, with the sights above your suppressor. This does not have that option. So aiming and getting a clear sight picture is next to impossible. This is pretty much a point of aim, point of impact uh, weapon system now. That being said, again, a pocket rocket, a 22, you're not exactly aiming for distance and hitting stuff at 75 yards with this. It does exactly what it's designed to do. If this was 1980s West Germany, uh, on the other side of the wall, cloak and dagger, uh, London fog trench coat and hat, CIA versus uh, the German spy machine and the Russian spy, the KGB spy machine. So this is something pretty cool, a little nostalgia, kind of throwback to the 80s, uh, East German, West German, CIA, KGB action, like I just mentioned. And uh, that's about it, guys. So I hope you dug the video. If you saw our last set we did with compensators, you'd see us out on the range running this bad boy. Uh, check us out for some more stuff coming up. We got some more range time. We got some more tactical tips. We got some more sit down, go through some clips. Uh, www.theronintraining.com. Smash that subscribe button. Bash that like button. Leave some comments. Tell us what you'd like to see. If there's something you want to see, let us know. If there's something you'd like us to go through and possibly uh, put up here for some content, let us know. We're here for you guys. We're putting this stuff out there for you guys. And uh, hopefully you dig it and keep watching.